on YouTube. Today we're going to be changing both tires on a 2001 Honda Shadow Spirit 1100. We're going to be doing both tires on this guy. Nice flame. Adds 5 horsepower right there. So. Yeah, he was getting a little low on tread. Uh, I need to get some better lighting over here. Now, the one thing, these, the wheels on these things are easy to take off and on. The problem is the frame's so narrow and it's not a full frame. The engine sits lower than the frame and you got to, and the filter does too. So you got to watch out when you're lifting this bike up to not hit the oil filter because you could crush it, bend it, and it starts leaking and all sorts of nasty things. So, uh, yeah, it, and... <laughs> Now the bike was a little tippy on the stand, so I just got it strapped here so it doesn't want to tip anymore, just in case. So, you gotta stay tuned. I'm gonna get these wheels off and show you how to take them off and put them back on, alright? See you in a bit. They're gonna be honking at me. Alright, guys. We're gonna take a 14 millimeter rent, uh, socket. Zip off your, there's a threaded rod on your brake lever here. Alright. Alright. You can take this off. Uh, this nut here, special nut off this threaded rod to this brake lever here for your rear brakes. That out to the side. 12, uh, 12 millimeter. There's a pinch bolt. Actually, we're going to leave that. Down here, I don't know if you can see that. There's a rod right here that keeps your drum, your brakes from spinning. There's a bolt right here, 12 millimeter. Sometimes there's a cotter pin there, which there should be, but there isn't one on this one. Break that loose. Yeah. Got another washer, should have a cotter pin too. That bolt just pushes through. Push it on through the back side here. There's a bolt, there's a hole for the cotter pin right there. There we go. Sometimes there's a rubber washer that goes between the tab on this deal and that rod. It goes in between them. We're gonna drop it. All right, what's next? Axle nut. We got a one and one sixteen. The reason you uh, leave that pinch so your axle doesn't turn. Forgot about that. Crack your nut loose. Did I take your nut off? Now we take our 12 millimeter. Come on. Loosen it up. Don't have to take it out, just loosen it up. Now let's put this, just lightly touch the wheel back to the ground. Stuff a rubber mallet. Tap it on through. Make sure it clears your exhaust. 
This one barely does. Slip her on through. Take out your spacer. Hold it so it don't drop on you. No. Spin. See how this spins? Here's the tab. That's what that rod's for to keep this thing from. So you lock up the brakes. This thing's gonna want to spin on you. I usually take so I don't lose it. There's a little pin in here with a hole in it. That's what this rod goes through. And then take the spring off the rod. I like to put those somewhere so they don't fall off and roll away. <laughs> I've had that happen before. Now lift the bike up this slightly off the ground and then let go and pull. Jack it up. Clear the wheel. Take drum brake assembly out. Come on. Yeah, see. See the tread's almost caught. Oh <laughs> shoot shit. <laughs> Woo! So, yeah. And it's got some major cupping issues. So, you must have ran this flat or low. So, let's do, let's do the front wheel. Alright. Front tire time. Um, I'm sure you see my little rigged up situation over here. Like I said, these narrow frames are a pain in the ass to lift with that engine being below the frame rails. So, in order to keep the bike upright-ish, uh, I use the ratchet strap, but then it starts pulling my jack over, so I got those blocks to keep my jack from moving over. So, she's sturdy enough for now. So, first things first, take a pair of pliers or channel locks or something like that, or not. Probably should have looked first. I don't have a Phillips screwdriver for some reason because I think I lent it to a friend. So you need a Phillips screwdriver. My bad, not a pair of channel locks. There is a Phillips screw on the end of this cable. Crack that bolt loose. And wiggle the cable out. This is your speedometer cable. Then, flip this over. We are going to take our, let's see, what do we got here today, 22 millimeter, crack our axle nut loose, there we go. Then, 12 millimeter pinch bolts, just got to loosen these up, don't need to remove them. There we go. Alrighty then. Then, a 14 millimeters, go in the right direction, crack and loose. Battery's starting to die. Yep. Take them out of the way. Slide our caliper out. Brake pads are looking on the thin side. Rubber mallet. Oh. 
pull your wheel out, take your speedometer hood deal off, spacer out, go take it to the shop nearest shop, have the tire change, and come back and I'll show you how to put it on. Alright. Welcome back guys. Alright. Time to put the front tire on. And let's go do it. Now, you see in here there's some tabs. Okay? And then there's some tabs in here. Uh so but you got a big area for it to go into, you'll see it. And those tabs so just make sure the tabs aren't hitting each other on each side and you'll be fine. So and then there's a notch right here on the top of this that goes it needs to go on the back side of this knob on the fork this way this doesn't it'll hit it and stop from spinning while the wheels going forward all right then put our spacer back in Roll this guy in. All right. Square this up. Okay. Grab the axle. Slightly lift up on the wheel. Stab the axle in. Look at that. Like butter. Get a few love caps in there. To da. Then we're gonna make sure we're gonna rotate this guy here. Our uh, uh, speedometer pickup deal. I'm gonna spin it until you counterclockwise so you feel that the the two tabs hitting each other now there's a slit a slot and then there's a, a flat piece of metal that spins as the, the wheel spins now they're gonna line up with each other usually what I do is I kinda stick it over there spin the wheel spin the wheel oh, I think I got it until it slides there it goes Till that slot and that blade go together. Then, gotta find a hole for the screw. Got it. Now, I normally don't use power tools, but in this occasion, like I said, I don't know where my Phillips is at. So, just, gonna, just one, one ugga, not even a dugga. Back to the other side. Check your brake pads. These looking pretty low. Slide it on. Take our caliper bolts. Get them started. Axle bolt. Get that started. Actually, I'll run that all the way down. Go. Run these bolts down. Yep. Swap out the sockets. <coughs> Torque these down. Caliper bolts. Ooh, not too much. Okay, well we're done. I'll take our axle, turn it the right way. Kind of tighten it down. See the axle's spinning over here. Need to get some 
to stick in it and keep it from spinning. There we go. Good. Now, let's tighten down our pinch bolts. Now these don't have to be super tight. Start with the outside first. Torque it down. Inside next. Torque it down. And then back to the outside. And torque it. And that's it. Same thing, outside, inside, outside, that's it, spin the wheel, pump the brakes up, ta-da, alright that's it, oh, make sure, when you take it for a test ride make sure the speedometer needle is moving with these cable ones. I've had it before where even though that's in there, the, uh, for some reason it wasn't working. So anyways, yeah. Now, let's get this back tire on. Show you how to do that. Squeeze around. Slip her on in. Grab your brake assembly. Make sure nothing's looking too bad in there. Let's see. All right. Stick that in. All right. Now, slowly lower the bike. catch on nothing okay I feel comfortable right there now put the bike in gear best to put the bike in gear so the final drive doesn't Best to put it in gear so the final drive doesn't rotate. All right. Lift it up. Oh, there. So the splines on the final drive didn't weren't able to spin because sometimes, yeah, they might not mesh up together. What they'll do is they'll go like this and it'll just spin it. And if one's locked in place, you can turn it until. It pops into place like that. Now let's go back to the other side. spring and our clevis pin or whatever you want to call it just a pin with a hole in the middle pin goes into the lever like so grab your brake rod that's attached to your brake pedal slide your spring on then as you swing this around 
put the rod into the hole of the pin. Grab your adjustment nut. Now there's a little groove right there that goes up into the pin. Okay, keep it from wanting to rotate because this is supposed to be easily adjusted. Just kind of give that a couple turns on the threads. Then you're going to take this bolt. Now there's a pocket. When this slides in, there's a pocket that fixes hex head to keep this from spinning. Make sure that's seated in there all the way. Okay. There you go. You'll feel it because the head of the bolt's kind of flush or recessed in a little bit. Now we'll take our rubber washer, washer and the nut. We'll put the rubber washer over the bolt. Just remember it goes between the rod and the brakes. And then we'll swing. We're going to rotate the brake assembly until the bolt goes in the hole of the rod. There it goes. Then take our washer. Our nut. Kind of snug that down. Take our axer, axer, axle, and spacer. So the spacer doesn't want to go in. Because, put the spacer, gotta lift the wheel up. There you go. Slide our axle in. Sound like it was in there all the way. Take our one and one sixteenth socket and ratchet. Our axle nut. Tighten this down. Sometimes you get lucky. Right. You're gonna watch the axle, make sure it don't spin. Sometimes the axle will want to spin on you. Now you can put, uh, if you got a front axle tool, you can stick it in there or a big Allen wrench. I think it's probably uh, 18 or 19 Allen. But luckily it's not turning on me. I can tighten this down. All right. Then we'll take our 12 millimeter. Tighten down on this pinch bolt. Doesn't have to be super tight. This guy's exhaust is loose here. All right. We'll go down here to this rod bolt. Tighten that down. It. I'll tighten the hell out of it. It's just a small bolt. Then we'll put a cotter pin in there too. I got some in the toolbox. Now, what I do for the back, I'm take it out of gear. Okay. Okay. Now, what I like to do is spin it. So you feel it start to grab. Like, I think 
think there's a jack in the way or something. So it's probably against something. Let me check the foot pedal. Oh yeah. Okay. What I usually do is back it off a couple turns. One, two, three. Make sure that groove in that end of that nut is over the pocket or the uh, that pin. That, Cause that's your adjustment on your brake and how basically how much your foot pedal travels. But I usually tell the customer, hey, you know, if you want it travel less, travel more, and you know, this is how you go about doing it. So uh, axles tight. Brakes adjusted. It's tight down there, just missing the cotter pin. Uh, this is tight. Other than that, that's it. Um, you know, make sure everything spins. Make sure your brakes work. Uh, I'm gonna put that cotter pin in, and then good to go. So there you go, guys. 2001 Honda Shadow Spirit 1100. Both wheels taken off. Put back on. Good to go. Fresh set of rubbers and this guy put some of that ride on wanted to put some of that ride on tire balancer sealer great stuff for the everyday type guys i've i've run it before and for you racer guys out there that like to go to mexico probably not a good idea because uh yeah it doesn't like the front wheel comes off the ground and then when it comes back on it has to pick back up yeah it causes a little bit of a wobble uh, anyways, so, but if you're everyday guys, it's great stuff. So anyways, so if you like what you see, subscribe, give me a big thumbs up and comment down below what you like, what you don't like. I like, you know, just be gentle and then, uh, yeah, that's it. So you guys have a good one. All right. Adios.